Nerds, it's your boy, the OG GM. It's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon here at the 6th day of August 2022. It's 75 degrees and looking pretty nice today here at Site B. Gen Con is this weekend for anybody who cares. And we had the results of the Ennies. Yes. If you didn't vote, you can't complain. I know some people feel the, the Ennies don't really matter anymore. Uh, or don't really influence the industry, but I think they do because not a single Wizards of the Coast product won. Let's take a look at what did, and for all of you who are worrying that the storytelling single no DM thing was going to win, it didn't. Oh, and okay, just once again, let's blatantly use the kitten to shill my vlog. Subscribe to my vlog. Steve, the, the cat, wants you to subscribe to my vlog. Subscribe to my vlog. All right, any award winners? For anybody who cares. I care. Uh, and it's news. Product of the year. Call of Cthulhu. Yes. And Thirsty Sword Lesbians. I don't know. Maybe Thirsty Sword Lesbians, what you get past all the controversy and bullshit is decent. I don't know. Uh, best game. Root, the RPG. And Thirsty Sword Lesbians. Best Adventure, Uncaged Goddesses, and the Troubleshooters, the U-Boat Mystery. Um, fan favorite publisher, this one should come as no surprise, Darrington Press. Darrington Press, of course, is the ones who are doing the uh, stuff for the Critical Role people. Uh, will we see a Critical Role-centric role-playing game that is not produced by Wizards of the Coast? I hope so. Best Writing, Fate Forge, the box set for 5e. Looks like that might be our only 5e thing. And congratulations, the gold winner for best writing was Dune Adventure in the Perium. Congratulations, 2D20 Modifius. Best supplement, Root, the RPG, Travelers and the Outsider, and Call of Cthulhu, Cults of Cthulhu. Gold winner, Call of Cthulhu. Best rules, Haunted West. I was just looking at that, thinking of maybe picking up. And here's our one nominee for the one everybody was working up, worried about, Colostal, a solar RPG adventure, one for best rules. Yeah, I can live with that. Best setting, Jengishi, Blood in the Banquet Hall. This one I don't get at all, but uh, whatever. Uh, Jengishi is the one where you played uh, people in a Chinese restaurant who also fought demons. So, uh, yeah... I could see that as a one-shot, maybe, or a short campaign. I don't know if that's the best setting for a long-term campaign. And Taldori campaign setting reborn, uh, one for best setting. You know, a nod to Critical Role for making the industry tons of money. I'm not surprised with that one. I wouldn't have given it to Critical Role, but whatever. Best family game, Questlings and Gold, should become as no surprise, is Wander Home. Best RPG-related product. Cult, Labyrinths and Secret Chambers, and Shadows of Eastern Undaline. I don't even know what that is. It's a CD of music, I guess. Uh, best layout was Cthulhu, Octung Cthulhu, 2D20 Game Master's Guide, and Delta Green, Impossible Landscapes. A double header there for Call of Cthulhu. Best free product, the 221 Level 1 Anthology, which is, was a collection of OSR and 5E adventures. And Vampire the Masquerade, the New Year's Eve story, Old Sanguine, the great pun on a name there. Best Monster was Home Field Advantage, a companion of Lair Actions, and Nightfowl, a beastery for 5e. Uh, not, you know, I'm happy to see some third-party 5e products win. I'm very happy to see that Wizards of the Coast didn't win anything. Best Organized Play, uh, Two Hearts Apart, and I Find That Familiar. Um, nothing for Critical Role there. Uh, Best Art Interior, Wander Home, and the One Ring, second edition, are only one for uh, Free League this year. Free League better get back on their uh, A-game. Best Art Cover, Uncaged Goddesses and Wander Home. Best Production Value, uh, Bard Song, Legends of the Ancient Four, and Call of Cthulhu. Another gold for Call of Cthulhu. Best Aid Accessory, Call of Cthulhu. And Fate Accessibility Toolkit. That's the Call of Cthulhu prop set. Best Aid Accessory Digital Call of Cthulhu 3D Digital Game Props. And Morkborg Digital Monster Generator. 
Best Atlantic, Best Electronic Book, One Night Stand, and The Lazy DM Companion. The Best Podcast for a Roll to Cast at Eight Slayed Nobody. Best Cartography, Cults, Labyrinths and Secret Chambers, and Krepsky's Map Collection. And the Best Online Content was, congratulations, Sly, Flour- Sly Flourish, his blog won for Best Online Content, and RPGBot.net. So, yeah, hey, congratulations once again, Product of the Year, Call of Cthulhu, and Thirsty Swords Lesbian, Game of the Year, Root, and Thirsty Sword Lesbians, and Best Rules of the Year, Haunted West, and Colossal the RPG pro- Adventure. Looks like our number one winner this year was Call of Cthulhu and Call of Cthulhu related product, proving once again that Call of Cthulhu is the number two role-playing game in the world for a reason. Number one, two, in the, number two in the United States, number one in the rest of the world, because it's, you know, the best system out there and allows you to do everything that D&D does, but better. So, for... All you Wizards of the Coast 5th edition people out there, well, don't be too sad. Some 5e product did one. It's just not Wizards of the Coast 5e product because the industry is tired of Wizards of the Coast bullshit. And the industry is tired of the Wizards of the Coast bullies bullying people. And for those of you who uh, are hardcore Wizards of the Coast, think Dungeons & Dragons is Gygax's legacy and, you know... Wizards of the Coast 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons is the best thing in the world. Well, once again, here's the industry saying, suck it, Wizards of the Coast. Suck it long and suck it hard. Get over it. Your time in the sun is coming to an end. Call of Cthulhu is coming back. Congratulations. Not a single nomination for anything produced by Wizards of the Coast. A lot of nominations for Call of Cthulhu. Yes. Sad to see my favorite publisher, Free League, didn't get anything but best art but who knows maybe something that they've got coming down the pike might win them again biggest surprise for me best settings probably i mean i'm not surprised that camp taldori won i don't think it's the best setting but i know you know a lot of other people do i'm you know yeah my personal opinion of the writing of matt mercer continues to dwindle now that i'm in a uh, 5e game r- r- using the Matt Mercer campaign stuff. It's like Jesus Christ. Uh, so yeah, the that's the biggest surprise. Other than that, everything. I mean, most of the stuff I voted for won. Um, so yeah, I called it pretty good this year. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, best adventure. I think I called something else for best adventure. Fan favorite publisher. I, I knew they were going to win that one. Yeah, no big surprises on here ex- other than the Jingishi Blood at the Banquet Hall winning for best setting and Taldori campaign setting winning for best setting. I, I don't, I've been, yeah, I don't get that one at all. Uh, and it's not my personal bias against Critical Role or Matt Mercer. It's like I'm actually playing through something Mercer wrote right now and it's awful. It is awful. <laughs> I will give a few full review of that once the campaign comes to an end, but yeah. So, yeah, Call of Cthulhu, bitches. Suck it, Wizards of the Coast. Well, that's it. I know most people don't get as excited about the Indies as I do and think it's a sellout and crap and don't care. And that's fine if you don't. It's news. I'm going to report upon it. If you want to badmouth me for reporting on it, that's fine. Go ahead. Feel free. It's, you know, clicks are clicks. So, yeah. See you around. That's it. Bye.